This is Jackson the Kid Knight, and you're listening to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. Get ready for an hour, and who knows, of daily fantasy sports analysis from our panel of experts. Without further ado, let's meet the team from New York. He's the Don of all Beast Motors, the boat himself, Beast Mode Cow. From Cambridge, Minnesota, he's a father of four and has the most glorious beard in all of the DFS. It's Eric F. And last but not least, he's so St. Louis, ask his tattooist. He's the host of our show, the master of black Negro jiu-jitsu himself, Leroy Stephan. Before we get into this podcast, big shout out to our sponsor, Ball Club Box at BallClubBox.com. Ball Club Box is a sports apparel provider that provides their subscribers with monthly gift boxes full of quality licensed sports merchandise that reflects their customer support for their team. Use these, these items only to appear at specific stadiums or sports stores, but they intend to make it easier to customers to support their di- desired franchise without leaving their homes and in some cases state by offering this subscription service. You pick the team's. They pick the items and send them to you each uh, month. There's three different boxes. You got the club box, $55 for $75 worth of apparel. The executive club box, $75 for $125 worth of apparel. And the ball club season plans. That's the deal right there. That's $150 for three, uh, seven, uh, $75 boxes worth $125 each. That's $375 worth of stuff. That's $225 more than you pay. Ballclubbox.com. Go check it out. I'm telling you, they're the shiz. Also, do me a favor. Go check out Kobe's Corner. That's Kobe with a K. Corner with a K. Uh, I hope there's not another K. But go check out Kobe's Corner on YouTube. Uh, also, go check out Kobe'sCorner.com. That's two Ks. Um, I'm a writer for the site. Kobe did the intro. Good friend of mine. Great YouTube channel. Analysis. Breakdown of fights. On, of course, articles by me and other MMA Journalists, podcasters, whatnot, Kobe's Corner, man. Go check it out. One of the fastest growing YouTube channels for MMA and one of the best online. Welcome to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast for UFC Fight Night 114. I'm your host, Master of Black Negro Jitsu, Lil Rod Stephan. And today I'm joined by my co host, Eric F., coming with the analysis, uh, CG3 Analytics, coming with the numbers. And uh, we're missing Beast Mode Cal, but that's all right. That's okay. We killed it last week. We had the whole team here. We were right on point. We're going to be live from Mexico City, Mexico, which means we're going to be up in the altitude, and we're going to have to deal with that variable because the fights get sloppy when you get this high in the altitude. Before we do anything else, let's go ahead and get the fight picks, the quick picks from Mitchell Capacodones from American Top Team. And uh, then we're going to get into our analysis for the card. Let's do that right now. Mitchell Capuquinones, welcome to the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast. Uh, getting your quick picks for UFC Fight Night 114. Pettis versus Moreno here. Let's run them down real quick. Jordan Rinaldi versus Alvaro Herrero at 155 pounds. Who you got and how? Which one was the first one that you said? Who who was it? Jordan Rinaldi versus Alvaro Herrera at 155 pounds. Who's your pick and how? Oh, man. All right, let's see. Um, nine and four. I'm looking at I'm looking at the at the uh, that's at the stats right now. So just based off of um, based off the stats, uh, man, I'm gonna have, I don't even know either one of these guys. But I'm gonna go with my Latin dude, the Mexican Alvaro Herrera. Uh, I'll say by decision or TKO. Okay. Joseph Morales versus R- Roberto Sanchez. I don't know who either of these two are, but I assume you don't either. But go ahead and pick. Nah, I mean A and O, seven O. They go. both look Hispanic. Yeah, one O must go. Uh, the reach advantages to Joseph Morales and submissions to this guy. Uh, well, this Roberto Sanchez has more of a, a, a finishing rate for what it looks like, 80, 86% submission and 14% decision as opposed to 25. So let's go with uh, 
Let's go with uh, Roberto Sanchez. Okay. Let's get uh, Diego Rivas versus Jose Alberto Quinones at 135 pounds. Just because he has my last name, I don't know either one, but just because he has my last name, even though it's spelled with a Z, I'm going to go with Quinones, man. I'm going to go with him. Okay. Quinones it is. It, yeah, this is a card full of uh, tough Latin American guys. Ronnie Yaya versus Enrique Brunones. Uh, I've seen Ronnie Yaya at the gym at American Top Team before a couple of times, so I don't know who the other guy is. So I'm gonna go with Ronnie Yaya, really talented he, dude, man. Does he train? Does he train in American Top Team right now? I don't know if he still does. I've seen him there before. Um, I don't know if he was training there for this fight, so I really couldn't. I really couldn't say. But I know he's been there a couple of times before. So really nice guy. Um, I met him in passing. You know, I've been introduced to him, but never really like he's 135, so I'm not gonna train with him, but. He, uh, from what I've seen, he's, he's a nice guy. Dustin Ortiz versus Hector Sandoval at 125 pounds. Um, let's see. Uh, I really haven't seen these guys fight before, but based on the stats that I'm seeing, I'll go with Hector Sandoval, kid Alex. I'll go with him for, uh, okay. let's go some uh, decision. decision. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with him for the decision. Brad Scott versus Jack Hermanson at 185 pounds. Dude, I feel horrible as a fighter being on the, on the roster not knowing half of these guys. You know what? I'm not even really Dude. a big, huge fan of fighters. I just, it's I, so I, many I, fighters I mean, I see- and it's so many cards. It's, unless you keep up with every card, you're not going to know this point yeah man unless you make some like big noise you do something crazy in there you're like top 10 top 15 i really don't know who these guys are i'm really good with faces but names i'm not not so much but let's see uh this guy uh jack he has a ko percentage of 60 percent. so i'm gonna go with with him striker striker all the way okay alejandro perez who i believe is american top team member versus andre sukunta who is uh, is he American? I, For which one? I don't not. I'm almost thinking that he trains down the American top team. I'm almost positive. The one down here? Shit, I haven't. He don't look familiar to me at all. I haven't been there. I haven't been there like in a week and a half. So unless he's been there in that time, then I don't know who that guy is. I but I actually met Andre uh, at the fighter retreat. Um, and he's actually a pretty cool dude. He's really, real nice guy, real cool guy. Uh, we actually got a, We hung out a couple times at the retreat. Um, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with him just because I met him and he seems like a nice dude. So I'll go with him. Oh, okay. Let's go with the next fight here. So that was shot at- Yes, and what I think will be an absolute snoozer. We've got. Boring Rashad Evans versus non actor <laughs> Sam Alvey. I, I'm, I don't even know why I'm asking he's going to win, but who do you think is going to win this absolute uh, toilet bowl of a fight? Not taking nothing away from Rashad, man. But he hasn't been he hasn't been the same for a while. Dan Kelly outstruck him, man. That's uh. yeah, Dan, yeah. I mean, Dan Kelly's he's 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 definitely a sleeper, but. I don't know, man. Uh, damn. I- I'll go with Sam Alvey. I mean, it's a toss-up, but I'll just go with Sam Alvey. Just because of shot. I-, I don't know mentally how he is, how he's going to come into the game. And Sam Alvey, uh, uh, his-, his KO percentage is pretty high. So, Martin Robert versus Humberto Bandene at 145 pounds. Shit. Uh... Let's go with the uh, – damn, you would figure I know who, this, who these guys are. They're in my division. Uh, let's go with uh, Martin Martin Bravo. He's undefeated. He has pretty good split between KO and submissions. And, uh, yeah, I'll go with him. Alan Juban versus Nico Price, who I know is American top team. No, no, Nico, that's my boy, man. He, he's cool, cool fucking guy. Real cool guy. I, I got to go with Nico. Even though I, I did meet Jan, uh, Alan Joban at the fighter retreat, we, we chopped it up for a little bit. We talked. Um, I was picking his brain about a couple of things, uh, especially because he does work outside of um, 
outside of the UFC with like the whole modeling stuff like you that. So I'm model too, man. Yeah, man. I'm trying to. I'm trying to do whatever I can to make money. I'm trying to use every <laughs> avenue I can. If it's modeling, if it's acting, whatever it is. Um, I was picking his brain. I was like, yo, you know, I know you do this and that, and I'm just trying to make sure I can maximize my exposure with the UFC. You know, what I'm saying that the UFC carries a lot of weight. When you when people say people you know people hear, oh, you're a UFC fighter. I didn't realize that until I started saying it. Like, they look at you like, you know, you're a star. And I'm like, shit. So, um, but you know, I like Joe Ben He's a real cool guy. But Nico, that's my boy, man. Obviously, I'm going to go with Nico. I'll go with, uh, I don't think it's going to go to a decision. I, I doubt it. I think it's going to be the submission and KO. But I, I, I see that fight going as a finish. Random Marcos versus Alexa Grasso at 115 pounds. Uh, I've never seen these girls fight. Um, but Alexa is Latin. She's Mexican, so she's gonna have the. This is a Mexico, right? This card, this card, yeah, it's a Mexico. So I give the give it to the hometown favorite right there to uh, Alexa. Via, uh, well, damn, she doesn't submit nobody, but she knocks them out or a decision. So I say uh, KO. It looks like a striker versus grappler kind of kind of fight. So I'll go with Alexa for KO. And Sergio Pettis versus Brandon Moreno at 125 pounds. Oh man, I like I like the momentum that Brandon has right now, man. I, I like his momentum. I like his charisma. I like I like he's so crazy and wild, and he's he. I love how calm and how he's just having a great time in there, man. Um, I'm gonna go with him just on the momentum, and 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 he's just he's on a roll right now, man. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Brandon on this one, um, Sergio. And I think he comes from a, a Taekwondo background too. I know his brother does. Um, Pettis but I just are so underwhelming these days, man. Well, so well, but Anthony picking it back up, but Sergio, yeah. Yeah, man. Like they, they have they're so promising, right? Like their talent is just sometimes they just don't show up. Like it's like a wishy washy. So you don't know, you don't like you hear you hear about Anthony Pettis. You don't know which Anthony Pettis is going to show up, and depending on which one shows up, is how good he's going to do. But he, he's got champion uh, champion letdown syndrome because uh, people watched him fight for so long they kind of figured him out. But he's getting it back together now. It's not like he. It's, that's just what that's just what happens to champions is you fight so much in front of people everybody knows you they they start you know they start preparing for you you know. Yeah, that's true. It's very true. Um, unless you're like somebody like John Jones with his long ass freaking limbs and he does the same things, but he's just he's just fucking he's a freak of an athlete, freak talent. Um, but I, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to go with Moreno, man. I, I, I like the kid, man. He's, he's very exciting to watch. I'm going to go with him. Hope you guys enjoyed the quick picks from Mitchell Capo Quinones down at American Top Team. We're going to have him on the School of Black Negro Jitsu uh, next week for a very informative podcast. He had a very Weird medical incident happened during that Jared Gordon fight. We're going to have Dr. Garrett Vasquez on to talk about it, and uh, we're, we're going to do a little analysis on that because that, but be, because of what happened to him medically, that was why what happened in having that fight. But anyway, getting on to this card, UFC Mexico City. We're way up in altitude. We got a lot of young fighters on the card. We got a lot of Mexicans. I'm assuming they're going to be prepared for the altitude, hopefully, better than uh, the people that don't come from Mexico in the altitude. But who knows? This is a this is a big wild card. Whenever you have a card in altitude, but uh, let's go ahead and get into this card. Uh, I think this is a wonderful week for GPPs. Um, cash is going to be a little bit harder, but you can create a hell of a cash game too. Um, so I like this card. A lot of unknowns. This is a great week to be a DraftKings player. Let's get on. Well, we got to take advantage of it too because we got a what three week break after this. Yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be a long time till there's another UFC card. So let's get right into it. At 155 pounds, Jordan Rinaldi versus Alvaro Herrera. Alvaro Herrera. Uh, Jordan Rinaldi is going to be coming in at $9,000. Alvaro Herrera is coming in at $7,200. I like Jordan Rinaldi because he's a grappler. But I like other people in his price range better. Alvaro Herrera has his great, he's a great GPP play. Because he's super cheap and flexible, which means you only really have to use one lineup or two lineups on him because you can fit everything else in. And he's got knockout power. He's got big power in his hands. So, Rinaldi is a consideration. I like other things in that price range. Alvaro Herrera is a preferred play. 
I don't really like any of this in cash um, necessarily. Maybe Jordan Rinaldi is a great, great cash play. Probably better cash than GPP. Eric F., what do you think? I don't know. I'm kind of torn on this one. Um, I don't know if I want to pay that much for Rinaldi at 9K, even in cash. I haven't decided yet. Her, Herrera, maybe. Uh, I, I, I like him in GPP. The thing you're going to have to do this week is I think you're going to have to do kind of have to think outside of the box here because I think you have to think how other people are going to think as well. So I'm trying to avoid getting too chalky with tournaments because I don't want to tie with like a million people. That should always be the thought in tournaments. CG3 Analytics, what do the numbers say? So 58% of Rinaldi's wins come by submission, and Herrera has 20% takedown defense. So Rinaldi definitely has big upside for submission. So he's in play for cash and GPP. But like you guys said, there's more guys at that price range that I like better. So I'm going to have minimal exposure to Rinaldi. But I do like Herrera as a GPP pawn. He's got big power in his hands, but no Herrera in cash. Okay, on to the next five. Actually, I like Herrera as a cash game consideration because he's super flexible. All those super cheap guys are cash game considerations for me. Joseph Morales versus Roberto Sanchez is our next fight at $8,100 even. And we know the Ross Stephens rule. If it's priced even, you should probably play it even. At least get a little bit of each guy in there. Um, anyway, uh, I'm really liking... Roberto Sanchez this week. Joseph Morales, from what I can tell, is not the best offensive wrestler in the world. He's got a strong jiu-jitsu game off his back, but he's able to be taken down. He's able to be controlled. That happened in a, lot, a lot in the, was it, uh, Pieva fight I watched of him. Roberto Sanchez is an absolute monster on the ground. I think he's won all of his fights just about by submission, even though it's $8,100 even. I want a lot more Robert, San, Roberto Sanchez than 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 um, uh, Joseph oh, is it uh, Morales this week Joseph Morales because of the wrestling upside and the fact that both these guys suck at striking. I really like Roberto Sanchez. Um, Eric F, what do you think? Right now, I kind of like Sanchez more, but for cash games, for me, and for I know you don't like this. Unfortunately, with a fight like this, if the odds swing really high in one guy. Probably going to target that person more in cash just because, you know, you get tremendous value there. So that's something I'm going to keep an eye on later in the week if odds change or swing high to anybody. I'm going to trust Vegas when it comes to my cash lineup. Did, did the odds swing with Ricardo Lamas last week? Uh, I think they did. I mean, that's not a bad but I, That's not a wet, bad no, way to solve a toss-up. No, uh, no, no, no. Analytics. And, like, the last, the last couple of weeks, it's worked. So CG3 Analytics, what the numbers say. Yeah, so both these guys are making their UFC debuts. There's not many stats on these guys. When I was watching film, I thought Morales was a little more well-rounded. Um, Sanchez does pull off some slick submissions. So I think both of these guys are in playing both formats. And all of these guys at 8,100 always seem to be on the winning lineup. So I will have exposure to both guys, probably leaning towards Morales, though. I don't see the wrestling upside. I don't like that. I really like Sanchez because he's the wrestler in this one. And he's relentless. You're right. Favorite you like guys from Team Alpha Male are speaking very highly of Morales as a prospect. You like that theory that I'm saying about keeping an eye on Vegas odds for cash, though, as well? It's a good like, way have you to solve that a toss-up. Toss it's a good way to solve a toss-up. It's a good way to solve a toss-up. Anyway, on to the next fight. It's not bad. But um, Diego Rivas versus Jose Alberto Quinones at 135 pounds. Let's get uh, Diego Rivas at $8,000. Jose Quinones at $8,200. Um, I'm liking Quinones because of his wrestling upside. I don't know if I can trust either of these guys. Diego Rivas was absolutely dominated by Loet, Noel Lajad on the mat. And uh, the wrestling and grappling is one of Quinones' better things. Uh, Rivas was totally outclassed in that matchup. I don't think that. He's a hot. He's not like a real UFC top level guy yet, but that flying knee was impressive. So I think I'll go with more Quinones and Rivas. But um, yeah, I don't see either of these guys in cash. Just like I really am not on the Sanchez Morales fighting cash. I like to go for other sure things. But uh, Eric F, what do you think? 
I don't hate if you want to use key owners in cash right now. I'm kind of considering just because I don't see him getting submitted early. So I think even in a loss, it could be something like we saw with Moicano last week where, you know, you could still get 40, 50 points in the loss. So I kind of like the safety there. So I don't hate that play for, for cash. And I, and I like his upside in tournaments. I'll probably have a little exposure to read us. Okay, CG3 Analytics, what did the numbers say? So Quinona's averages over four takedowns per 15 minutes and has a strong boxing base as well. I think he's better on the feet. He's better on the ground. I have a very strong take on this. I like Quinona's and cash and GPP, and I won't have any exposure to Rebos. Really? I mean, but yeah. Rebos, yeah, I haven't watched a whole lot of film on this, but Rebos is the kind of guy you kind of count out, but he did come back and scorch Noella Hyde. Uh, but he was getting just thoroughly dominated. Anyway, it's uh, kind of a lucky knee, though. You yeah, can't count yeah. it and, consistently. Well, and when I and when I'm saying a little bit of exposure, I'm talking if you're building like ten or more lineups. And if, if I'm using like doing like the three entry max, I probably wouldn't have Rebus at all. But I mean, if you're going to do like a like twelve, you know, twelve or more lineups, I don't hate Rebus from even for like a like ten percent. Rebus, Rebus has fifty seven percent takedown defense, so not good at all. All right, let's get to Ronnie Yaya versus Enrique Briones. Enrique Briones at 135 pounds. We've got Ronnie Yaya at $8,900. Henry Briones at $7,300. Um, I love Ronnie Yaya. Henry Briones is not a bad fighter. I think he's one of the only guys to be able to last with uh, Cody Garbrandt in the last three or four fights. Three to five fights that Garbrandt has had. But Ronnie Yaya usually is going to dominate a grappler at this level, in my of humble opinion. I don't think this is competition, but he does gas. And people will come back on him. And, and Briones does have that toughness. So I really like Yaya, but he gasses out because all that grappling. Briones can come back on him and finish him. So maybe Briones is a consideration, not really for me at this time. Eric F., what do you think? Well, like you're talking about the cardio issue kind of scares me, especially when you're talking about high altitude. So, you know, kind of scares me a little bit with the IA. I, um, if I'm going to use them, I'm probably going to have more exposure to them in cash than I would tournaments. Um, I just, I don't know. I, I'm i trying to look for, you know, that might a take GPP out tournament. Cash, I'm paying that much for somebody. Yeah, um, that might it, take them out of cash. If I'm going to use them, Eric. You're right. I don't know. But, but I don't know. I mean, like, tournaments, I, like, I kind of want to find pay 9K. I want at least 100 points. So I, I just got to think about that. If I think he's going to get me 100 points, I'll use him. But if I'm paying that much, I don't want, I don't want like, 80, 85 points, especially not in tournaments, because that's not going to get it done. Yeah, you, that's, that's, those are great points, man. Like, that's, that altitude and that bad cardio is not a good – that's like, that's like uh, matches and lit matches and gasoline. CG3 Analytics, what do you think? I think this is a great matchup for Yaya. He has 17 wins by submission, averages three takedowns per 15 minutes, and Briona has 44% takedown defense. So I'm hoping Yaya can go in there, get the takedown early, and finish Briona's. I think he's a great GPP play, and I think a lot of people are going to remember what happened in the Yaya Soto fight where Yaya gassed out. So I think Yaya might be pretty sneaky. He might be low-owned. But uh, Briones always has that upside for the knockout. So this is a tournament play. I'll have both sides, but more exposure to Yaya. Okay, on to our next fight. Uh, yeah, Yaya is a great GPP play always. Cash, I don't know. Uh, Dustin Ortiz, he's not, but Briones is not Joe Soto on the mat. Dustin Ortiz versus Hector Sandoval at 125 pounds. Dustin Ortiz is coming in here at $8,800. Sandoval is coming in at $7,400. I like me some Dustin Ortiz this week. I think this is a matchup that he should win pretty handily. He's a much better grappler. If he can't get it to the mat consistently, though, Sandoval is probably an excellent upset candidate here. As Sandoval is showing some improvements. But Freddie Serrano, when he would go to the wrestling, he was throwing Sandoval around. Dustin Ortiz is probably not as athletic of a wrestler, but he's a better MMA wrestler, and his skill level is high. So I really like Ortiz in this spot. Um, Sandoval is a live dog, and you probably, if you're going to play a lot of Ortiz, you probably have some Sandoval in there. 
Eric Gale, um, what do you think about this fight? I kind of like Sandoval for GPP just because of what you were talking about. If, if he can somehow keep his fight standing, he does have the advantage. The question is, can he keep the fight standing? That's the only pr- problem I have here. Ortiz, I don't hate in tournaments. So, but yeah, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm thinking. So, I mean, it's early in the week, so I still haven't like locked it, like a lot of my cash stuff down yet. So, that's kind of what I'm thinking. CG3 analytics, what the numbers say? On paper, this fight is real close. They both land around three strikes per minute. They both average around three takedowns per 15 minutes. So, I love the way Ortiz fights. He's constant pressure, has excellent wrestling. But I was watching film on Sandoval today, and this guy's no slouch. He out-wrestled Freddie Serrano, who is an Olympian wrestler, and he throws bombs. So at 7,400, I think Sandoval has a ton of value. So I'm going to target both guys in both formats. That's uh, it's a great point. I, I really like that point. Um, maybe Ortiz isn't as much as a cash game lock as I thought. Next fight up, we got Brad Scott versus Jack, Jack Hermanson at 185 pounds. Oh, man, Jack Hermanson is $9,100. Brad Scott is $7,100. And um, I like Brad Scott better than Jack Hermanson. I just don't think Jack Hermanson is that much better of a fighter than Brad Scott. I just really don't. Um, Brad Scott, I think Hermanson probably is the favorite. But this this big of a favorite, this is uh, this big of a price odds difference, I think is pretty ridiculous. Negative 255 favorite to plus 250 underdog. I guess that's about right. I would like an even closer, tighter line. Maybe negative 190 to plus 150 or something like that. That, that would make more sense to me. This is, this is not a blowout fight. But, uh, yeah, I like more Scott than Hermanson. Eric F., what do you think? Um, I'm kind of along the line to be here. I just don't know if I want to pay 9.1K for Hermanson. Seems a little too steep for me. Uh, I don't hate, hate using Scott. Um, I haven't decided what I'm doing with my cash lineup as far as a low, like my low price fighters that I want to use. I have an idea of what I want to do, but right now I'm, he's not in my construction right now. CG3 Analytics, what did the numbers say? Hermanson lands over five strikes per minute, but absorbs less than two strikes per minute. So he has good striking offense and defense. Bradley Scott absorbs almost four strikes per minute. So I think Hermanson definitely has the edge on the feet. But with that being said, at his price range, I think Hermanson's more of a cash play because <clears throat> Bradley Scott has never been knocked out. He's super durable. And... I don't think I'll have much exposure to Scott, but I don't think he's a bad GPP punt. Nine, uh, yeah, 90% of his wins have come from a finish. So he's a tough guy, and I definitely think that he has some value. Okie dokie. Let's go to the next fight here. Alejandro Perez versus Andre Sukuta at... Um Eighty one hundred dollars even for both both fighters. I um I kind of like Perez better at this point. This fight is being fought at um one hundred thirty five pounds. Superman just doesn't do much, and if he does, he starts to like he's a slow starter, and he starts to catch fire in like the third round. But this isn't a five round fight either, man. Like I just I don't see his takedown upside. I don't see his finishing upside. I didn't see it against Alvin Morales. So it's probably Alejandro Perez, although I don't see him finishing Sukumata. I don't really like this fight for GPPs or cash or anything. Eric F., what do you think? Yeah, I kind of tend to agree with you. This might be one of those fights where it's like you want to play just because, you know, they're priced even. But this might be one of those fights I just stay away from. I, I, I just don't see a lot of upside with either, really. CG3 Analytics, what the numbers say? Metrics favor Perez. He lands more than four strikes per minute, and he's more of a takedown threat. But when I was watching film, I kind of like Sukumthoth. I think he's more technical, and I think he's going to be very low on, too. So I really do like him in GPPs. Yeah, I so think I'm not going to much, not gonna have much exposure to Perez. I think what was that? More, I, say I think he's a more technical striker, too. But he... um. He just is not active enough for me. Like, I'd rather play another fight. That's all. 
Yeah, he's been training with Henry Hooft and all those guys from Black Zillion. So I don't know. I kind of like him. I think he's going to be low owned, and I think he can knock Prez out. I don't know if Prez is the kind of guy you knock out, though. That's why I don't like him. That's all. He doesn't. He's not active enough, and Perez in there, so he push over. This next fight, I don't even want to talk about it. This is BS. Um, Rashad Evans versus Sam Alvey at 185 pounds. I'm not playing either of these guys in anything because their fight style suck for DFS, and that's the end of the story. Sam Alvey won't knock out Rashad Evans, and Rashad Evans won't knock out Sam Alvey. Sam Alvey is $8,400. Rashad Evans is $7,800. Pass. I won't even say any more before you think about playing these scrubs. Eric F., what do you think? Well, see, I see, I don't know, because Sam Alvey is really low output, so he's either going to, like, knock you out or whatever, and I just don't seem to know what Evans. I don't hate Rashad as, like, a cash play, just because I see it going the distance, so I could see Rashad scoring some points and stuff like that and it being, like, a close decision, so I don't hate it if you want to use Evans in, in, like, cash. I just don't know what I'll do for tournaments, but I don't hate Evans as a cash game play if you want you know, somebody lower owned. Um, CG3 Analytics, what the numbers say? I actually think Sam Alvey's a pretty safe cash play. Um, averages more strikes per minute, plus he has 85% takedown defense to mitigate Rashad's wrestling. So I, I agree with you guys. This is going to be a low scoring fight. Probably going to go to decision, but. I think the safer play is Alvi. I just, Rashad, it, you know, he lost his last three fights, got outstruck by Dan Kelly. I just think he's done. Just saw an interview with him on UFC tonight. Uh, he just sounds like he's down in the dumps and ready to retire. Uh, yeah, I, I can't stand this fight. Let's go into the next fight. Nobody play that. Uh, Martin Brav, or maybe that's why you should play it, because it seems like it sucks so much. That would be contrary. Martin Bravo versus Humberto Bandanay at 145 pounds. Martin Bravo is coming in at $9,200. I believe he's the most expensive fighter on the card. Humberto Bandanay is coming in at $7,000. I uh, I don't like playing tough fighters that are this expensive, but Bandanay kind of he either looks like he's going to get smashed or maybe he might. Could pull something off, but Bravo seems like a great play in a way. I don't know if any of you guys agree. I'm kind of I the, the film on Bandana just isn't that good of quality, so it's hard for me to discern these things. Um, Eric F, what do you think? I want to play Bravo. I just don't know if I want to pay the price tag from like at nine point two k. If if you can fit. Like I don't, I, I don't think you need to force him in your lineup. I don't hate him as a cash game play. It's just a matter of I wouldn't sacrifice like in too many other areas just to get up to him. But I mean, you can you see the upside with the high price people. I mean, like look at uh, Cyborg last week and stuff like that. So I mean, there is safety there too. So I mean, I don't hate him as a cash game play. Okay, CG three and the links. What did the numbers say? Bravo is super high output. Landed over eight strikes per minute. <clears throat> Bandane lost four fights by submission. He was choked out with three of them, and that's a strength of Bravo. He's a real good real na- uh, rear naked choke and guillotine. So I do like Bravo in both formats. I like him better than Hermanson. I like him better than Rinaldi. I just think he's a safe overall play. Safe, probably. Uh, I think he could fit him in pretty easy. I'm going to probably have try and have some of him. But Bandane seems like he might could pull some, something off. This is one of those tough level fights, and I just – don't like these prices for these tough level fights. Let's go into the next fight. We've got Allen Juban versus Nico Price at um, 170 pounds. Juban is $8,700. Nico Price is $7,500. Juban is one of my more favorite plays on the card. I think he should take this one pretty handily. He does have a tendency to get clipped at times and stuff like that. But for the most part, I think he should be okay against Nico Price. As um, Nico Price's last opponent was uh, was was piecing him up pretty good before Nico landed a big uh, Alex Morano, and I think Juban is a better athlete and striker than Morano. So give me some uh, give me some Juban. I really like him right now. I love him in cash. To Eric F, what do you think? Yeah, I like 
I like Juban in cash and GPPs. Um, I think he might want a little bit of exposure just because price has a little bit upside. I just don't see him at being like heavy handed enough to to knock out Juban. So I so I kind of like him in in both formats right now. Okay, CG three analytics. What numbers say? Uh, Juban fights at a super high pace, five strikes per minute. 67% of his wins come by KO, but with Nico Price, 70% of his wins come by KO. So I think this fight could end in a finish. I think it's more of a tournament play for me. I like both sides, but I honestly might have more exposure to Price. I think he's the better wrestler. I know Juban's supposed to be a brown belt, but he doesn't seem very good from his back. And I think Price can get this fight to the ground. Okay. Let's go on to our next fight here. Uh, we've got Random Marcos versus Alexa Grasso at 115 pounds. Um, how do you guys, uh, oh, well, let me see here. Uh, wait a minute. $8,300 for Grasso, $7,900 for Marcos. I, oh, man, we saw Grasso get the pressure put on her and get kind of broken in our last fight against Leslie Smith. Random Marcos is probably a bit, she's not as active, I don't think, but she's technical and aggressive. I think she could employ the same game plan, and she's a better wrestler. Um, What are you guys thinking about this fight? I like, I'm, th- I'm picking Alexa Grasso right now, but I'm liking Random Marcos as a pivot off what the field will probably do, which is have over 30% uh, Alexa Grasso. Eric, what do you think of this fight? I right now I don't know if I'm going to touch it in cash. I just don't know. Um, I kind of like your point with Marcos, maybe using her a little bit more just because she's lower, because she's a lower price and and she's got the upside there. But I think you need to have some exposure with Marcos too. I just don't know what I'm doing with this fight yet. <laughs> CG three and leagues, what the numbers say? Grasso strikes at a high pace, almost five strikes per minute. Marcos is the better grappler, but Grasso has 75% takedown defense. I think if it remains standing, Grasso has the, the clear edge. I think she's a, a good cash play. Won't have either one of these, Marcos or Grasso in GPP, but I think Grasso is definitely a good cash play. I don't think Marcos has a path to victory. I don't know how she's going to win this fight. I have to watch some more film on this, think about this a little heavier. But I, I do kind of like Grasso at this price range. I just don't know about how many points she's going to score. And I like some other fights better. You know, that's Grasso, you don't need it. Herrig's a good wrestler. I don't think Marcos is going to be able to take her down and grapple her like, like Herrig did. I kind of like that point, too, though, because if you think about it, at 8.3K, she doesn't need, like, a huge amount of points either. I mean, if you get, like... Right. 75, 80 points, and when I mean, I mean, I'll take that in cash any day. Random Marcos is an excellent wrestler, too. Don't forget about that. But, I mean, okay, we're going to have to analyze this a little bit better. I, this close fight, I like Grasso at this point. I don't know, though. Brandon Moreno versus Sergio Pettis in his main event, though, at 125 pounds. I like... Moreno a whole bunch at eighty five hundred dollars. Don't like Sergio Pettis at all at seventy seven hundred dollars. This might be a good fight to stack. Nah, I'm liking a lot of Moreno. Pettis is he's you don't out. stack that much anyway. Oh, uh, do I? No, I don't. Um, oh, you I really guess, don't. I I guess you pay more attention to it because I don't. You don't stack as much as I do. I stack as much if I if. If I think it's worth stacking, I'll stack it. Uh, I just don't like Pettis too much. He's underwhelming me. Brandon Moreno is more aggressive. It should be a very close fight, though. I don't know if Moreno runs away with it, but um, it should be a very close, interesting fight. I think I just think Moreno should win and score over ninety points. That's my thought. Love me cash. Love me GPPs. Pettis could have a good, healthy score too, so this might be worth the stack. I'm not. Really thinking about stacking right now. Um, Eric Elf, what do you think? Well, I am telling you this. If I'm I'm 75% probably stacking this fight. Um, I think it's a good edge you can get. 
especially in cash, because if you can get like 125, 150 points with a stack, you're looking pretty good. So I probably look for that edge when I can. Um, I've even done it like a way, way while back. I even double stacked a cash, a cash lineup one time and it worked too. So I think it was the Ronda Rousey, Holly home card where home actually beat her. So that ended up working too. So, I mean, you just got to, I don't know. I'm if I'm using probably in a stack, and I'll probably have exposure to both in tournaments. Probably more Moreno right, uh, Moreno right now. But I will have some exposure with Pettis too. CG. I don't. Th- a, 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 and you could probably fade it too, maybe in a couple. I'm gonna say you could probably fade it in a couple of GPPs too. Yeah, CG. you don't have to have it in. Yo, yeah, you don't. That's a good point. Like this would be a healthy fade if you're confident in your lineups. This would be. It's not a bad fight to fade because if it doesn't get cracking, like if Moreno only ends up scoring 80, 90 points, it might be better to play the Sandoval, I mean, the uh, Morales and um, Sanchez fight or the um, Quinones and um, uh, Rivas fight. So Morales and Sanchez, yeah, in that same price range. So it, it this is a fadeable fight, I think. You don't have to have this one. I just feel really safe with Moreno and building around him. Uh, CG3 Analytics, what did Gumbert say? Moreno averages over three kicks out of 15 minutes. In his last fight against Ortiz, he has explosive striking as well. He's super op- uh, opportunistic. He has that it factor. But Sergio Pettis averages over four strikes per minute, fights at a high pace. And I think it's 7,700. Pettis has a lot of value. But um, in GPP, my preferred play is Moreno just because he's more of a finisher. 80% of his wins end in a finish compared to Pettis where 40% of his wins end in a finish. So I'm going to have I'm gonna have exposure to both sides and both formats, but leaning towards Moreno. Okay, and that's pretty much the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast for this week. Remember, guys, this card is being fought at altitude, so... It's going to be some funky fights and some funky results with this one. It's best when you're not totally sure about a fight to make sure you hedge it. Because like we said with the Yaya Briones fight or these fights between these young guys like uh, Morales Sanchez, man. Just any of these fights, somebody's going to gas hard and they're going to be up and they're going to lose because they weren't prepared for the altitude. So... Um, be aware don't, be a, that, don't, be afraid, don't be afraid to take some shots on some like off the board plays just to do something different too. Yeah, this, man, we're we're in a crazy spot here with this altitude. So make sure you hedge real good and make sure you uh, play some of those low price guys. Somebody's gonna get an upset this week, and don't be don't trust like Stone Cold Steve Austin would say. Austin three sixteen said DTA. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust anybody in this altitude. That's the MMA Edge Fantasy Podcast for this week. Hope you guys will go iTunes, Stitcher, YouTube. Check out School of Black Negro Jitsu. Also, check out Black Market Picks. Me and Travis Clark, all the top plays and all the different price ranges in under 10 minutes. Go ahead and do that. But that's it for us today. Peace out, guys.